Praise the Lord this fine day, saints of the Most High God. Hallelujah. It's the 25th of December, 2019. This is the word for today, broadcast here live on Spreaker. Hallelujah, Preacher John bringing you the word today, and I'm telling you right now, this is a word we need to remember, because we are in such a time that every the whole world is going one direction, okay, one direction, and that's down, that's down. But God's people, we are not of this world, not of this world any longer. I'm telling you right now, we got to remember this. And we have to be obedient to the Lord and walk in that truth that we are not of this world. Hallelujah. Father God, seal this word to our hearts today, Lord. Let us remember your great and awesome word. Let us be obedient to you. Let us walk in your way, O God. Hallelujah. You've spoken your word, Lord. You have sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, down here. Hallelujah. Born of a virgin, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. We thank you. Father God, hallelujah, for Jesus, and Jesus, we bless you, crucified from the foundation of the world, hallelujah, giving your life, your selfless life, hallelujah, totally, completely surrendered unto the Father, the perfect human, hallelujah, you are the one who contains all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, hallelujah, you are the express image of the Father, Lord Jesus, we bless and praise your name. Thank you for birthing us anew. Thank you for for saving us, O God, choosing us. Oh, hallelujah, Father, we bless you. Choosing us in your Son before the foundation of the world. We so thank you, Father. We bless and praise your holy name. And just crush that dragon down under our feet in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Not of this world. That's today's message. Not of this world. John 8, 20. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Uh Uh-huh. Nobody could touch Jesus. His hour had not yet come. And let me tell you something right now. Our hour hadn't come either. This world order can't touch none of us. Because our hour hasn't come. If your hour comes, they can touch you. There are many brothers and sisters today in China who are in prison. Their hour has come. They, they, they've been fighting a good fight of the faith. They've been walking in the truth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Worshiping God daily. Living the life of Christ. And the government in China is so wicked and so evil. They can't stand it. They start arresting all the believers. Those who will not bow down to their, to their world. Those who will not succumb to their torture. And they are giving their life for the Lord Jesus. They're giving their life as a testimony that they are not of this world. They are from above. Hallelujah. They are from above. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he saith, whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, oh yeah, Jesus said unto them, ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I am not of this world. I'm not of this cosmos, this orderly arrangement. I'm not of this way of this world. See, this is a fallen world we are in. Jesus says, I am not of this world. Now listen to this. I want to go over here to John 3. I want you to hear this now. It says, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, talking to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. Okay? He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, is Spirit, little s. Marvel not. 
that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again, ye must be born anew. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell when it, whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen. And ye receive not our witness. See? And that's what we do. We testify. See? We testify that we have seen, that what which we have seen, that which we have experienced. We testify. And ye receive not our witness. The world does not receive the witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how, you, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Oh, praise God. See, Jesus is letting us know we have to be born from above. Hallelujah. See, and we are born, when you're born anew, when you're born again, you are born from above. You are birthed anew. You get a brand new spirit. Hallelujah. God resurrects that old dead spirit. And the life of Christ resurrects your spirit, man. Hallelujah. You are born from above. You're not from this world any longer. Hallelujah. You're in the world, but you are not of the world. Hallelujah. We must remember this. Now, we have a great story, wonderful history of David, a man after God's own heart. In the book of Second, First Samuel chapter 26, <clears throat> we get a picture of this. We get a picture of being from above, hallelujah, and how being from above means, what it means, how we are to be, how we are to act, and also being of this world, how they act. Listen to this. And the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Hakila before Jeshimon? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. <coughs> Saul's got 3,000 guys with him going after David. David's got 600. Oh, he's outnumbered. Oh, yeah. And Saul pitched in the hill of Hakila, which is before Jeshimon, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness. David abode in the wilderness. Oh, hallelujah. And he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. And David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in very deed. Saul surely was come. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay. And Abner, the son of Ner, of Ner the captain of the host, and Saul lay in the trench. And the people pitched round him and about him. And I, I found that very interesting. The trench. They dug a big hole in the ground for Saul to get in and lay down so nobody could harm Saul. See, Saul was of this world. Saul was all about himself. See, But what was David? Then answered David and said to Ahimelech the Hittite and to Abishai the son of Zariah, brother to Joab, saying, who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go. I will go down with thee. So David and Abishai came to the people by night. And behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench. And his spear stuck in the ground in his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now, therefore, let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once. And I will not smite him the second time, Abishai says. I'll take care of him. One stab wound. Doom. I'll kill him right dead to the ground, David. I'll smite him. I won't have to hit him twice either. That's what he said, because that was David's enemy, Saul. And look at David. Now, David's from above, saints. Hallelujah. David is from above. When, when Samuel poured that oil on David, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. Hallelujah. From above. Yeah. Oh, praise God. 
Yeah. The Spirit of God left Saul and went right on David. Shoom, from above. Hallelujah. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Look at the humility of David the second time. First time when he cut off Saul's, Saul's skirt. This time he's telling Abishai, don't touch him. Don't touch him. David said, furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster and the cruise of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster, and they got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was falling upon them. And I'm telling you right now, there's a deep sleep from the Lord falling upon this wicked world, and they're just all walking around. They don't know what they're doing today. They really don't. This whole world is just going down, down, down. And all the wickedness that's been done in the darkness, all the wickedness and the evil that's been uh, being done for, for hundreds of years, thousands of years in the darkness is all coming out into the light. It's all being brought into the light. Hallelujah. And it's going to all be exposed. God says, uncover the leg. God says he's going to do this. God said it in his word. And this is what you're seeing today in this world, the true heart of man. All the wickedness and evil and vile, wicked vileness of mankind being exposed for all to see. And it vexes our righteous soul. Because mankind is so evil. And they're calling evil good. And they're calling good evil. That's what Saul did. He called David evil. I'm telling you right now. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill. So David, he kind of had to go down a little bit to where Saul was. He was on a hill over here. David had to go down a little bit and they dug this big trench in the ground, put Saul down in there so he could sleep restfully at night. Nobody could harm him. And then they, all of his men were sleeping all around him and God put them all in a deep sleep. And David went down there and took Saul's javelin took his spear, and took his cruise of water. Then David went to the other side and stood on the top of a hill. I'm telling you right now, this is a lesson for us. Afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that cries to the king? David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept the Lord, thy Lord the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king, thy Lord. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth, ye are worthy to die, because ye have not kept your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear in the cruise of water that was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice and said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, O my lord, O king. And he said, Wherefore doth my lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in mine hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the lord hath stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be children of men, cursed be they before the Lord. For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go, serve other gods. Now therefore let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea, as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes. 
This day, behold, I have played the fool, and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord. And let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Oh, that verse 24. And behold, as thy life, saw was much set by this day in mine eyes. In other words, David said, I didn't want to kill you. I didn't want to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. Okay. Let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord. And let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Oh, hallelujah. See, God is our deliverance, not this world. Not the ways of this world. God, Almighty Yahweh, is our deliverance. Hallelujah. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. And I'm telling you right now, Saul was in a world, world, world of pain. Saul was in a way, saints, that was so bad. I'm telling you right now, and this whole world, and this whole religious system of man is in such a bad way. They are the saws today, this whole false Christianity. They are the saws. You come in with the truth of God's word, the cross, the self-denial, and I'm telling you right now, they show you the door. And if they could kill you and not go to jail, they would. They would, literally. Chapter 28, 1 Samuel. Now let's look at, look at Saul. What, what he, look where Saul is. Look where Saul is today, and you look at the Christian church today, and in America, these organized systems of men, and you'll you'll see the same thing happening. We see it. We see it on Facebook. We see it all over the place. People being just like the world. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare, to fight with Israel. And Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly, but thou shalt go out with me to the battle, thou and thy men. Let me let me look it up here. Hold on, I think I got the wrong chapter. Because I want to make sure I get the right word here. It might be the next chapter I need to read. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. No, it's chapter 28. Okay. Praise God. Let me just keep reading. Hallelujah. And David said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits or the wizards out of the land. Okay, he put them away. That was one of the commandments of God. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw, when he saw, when he saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. Oh, yeah, he was afraid, all right, because he wasn't in the will of God, saints. Yeah, he wasn't in the will of God. No, 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 no. He was outside of the will of God. And so many today are outside of the will of God. And they're afraid, and they're fearing. Oh, hallelujah. When Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. See? Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Oh, at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee divine unto me by the familiar spirit. And bring me, bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. 
Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul sware to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. <laughs> and the woman saw Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. She was really freaking out. I mean, and this is how this world is today. I'm telling you right now, these people, they love their witchcraft. Oh, they love putting spells on people and doing all this wickedness and everything. But I'm telling you right now, it's all coming right back on their heads. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. All of it's coming right back on their heads in Jesus' name. When a person loves evil and loves wickedness, I'm telling you, God says, here you go. Gives them all the evil they want and all the wickedness they want. And I'm telling you right now, it is going to be their destruction down into the pit. When it's all said and done, all of hell and everyone in hell. And all the demons in hell are going to be cast into the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Hallelujah. And then Saul tried to tell her, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Now in chapter 31 it says, now the Philistines, look, look here's the end of Saul. And here's the end of all these, these false religious orders today. I don't care what religion it is. Does it matter? Atheism, communism. Socialism, democracies, Catholicism, all these religions of men, Baptists, Catholics, it don't matter, Pentecostals, it doesn't matter what organization you're in. If you're denying the truth of the gospel, you're denying the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not taking up your cross and following him. You are not walking the crosswalk. David walked the crosswalk. He did not kill Saul. He could have killed him two times and probably more than that. But he didn't kill him. Why? Because David was a man after God's own heart. He did what God told him to do. You remember when David was, all of his family was taken away. The, the Amalekites came and took all, just took all the families of David and David's men, all their families and all their goods and just burnt Zeklag to the ground. And David said, what, Lord, what, what, you want me to go after him? What can I, and the Lord said, go after him. David said, am I going to get everything back? And the Lord said, you're going to get everything back. And David went after him with 400 men. And they got everything back. See, David did what God said to do. And today, we as Christians, we who are filled with the Spirit of God, we must be obedient to the Lord and do what he says to do. Chapter 31. Look at the end. This is the end of all those who deny the Lord. All those who will not be obedient to the word of God. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul <coughs> and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Melchishuas, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded of the archers. Then said Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. And his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. Saul fell upon a sword. He did it. He killed himself. He was afraid of the Philistines, what they were going to do to him. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. And when the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley and they that were on the other side, Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, 
that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Geboa. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent into the land of the Philistines round about to publish it in the house of their idols and among the people. And they put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth. And they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. Oh, they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. And I'm going to look that up, what Bethshan means. Because there's something there quite possibly. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And that is in verse 10 of chapter 31 of 1 Samuel. Bethshan. Hallelujah. House of ease. Oh, man. House of ease. Oh, they, they fastened his body to the wall of the house of ease. Oh, Saul had it. I mean, he had it made. If he would have just been obedient to the Lord, I mean, Saul had it made. He was head and shoulders above all the people. He, he, he had everything. God just blessed him, but he just wouldn't be obedient. He just thought about himself. And what he could gain from everything. What was for. And that's the mentality of this world today, isn't it? In the religious systems of men. And in the non-religious systems of men. All these systems of man today. Once again, Jesus said, I am not of this world. He told those wicked Jews. He told those wicked Pharisees. He's telling those wicked denominational people today who have all these big gigantic organizations, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. See, we are of another kingdom, saints. We are of another kingdom. <coughs> and we got to remember this. Jesus Christ is Almighty God in the flesh. He has a people. We are His people. Those who are born anew and filled with the Spirit of God are born from above. We are not of this earth anymore. We are down here on this earth. We are able to be tempted by the devil, tempted by the flesh, tempted by the world. But we have all the power from God Almighty God. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work to say no to the devil, no to the world, no to the flesh. And walk in the humility of Christ today. Every day when we bless, give the blessing, hallelujah, the Aaronic blessing, hallelujah. And I say, go forth conquering and, and to conquer in the mighty humility, mighty humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by my spirit. Saith the Lord of hosts. And it's the spirit of humility. Jesus humbling himself. You think about that. He humbled himself. The highest came down and took the lowest place. Humbled himself. And today the world is still trying to get up. Get up. Get up. Go higher. Go higher. Go higher. And all the time they think they're going higher. They're actually going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. The only way to go high is to go down. You got to go down before the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and be born anew from heaven. Hallelujah. And then you get resurrected. Hallelujah. He gives you a new spirit. You are a resurrected. Ooh, man. You, you have the first resurrection and you walking in resurrection power. Like Jesus walked. He walked in resurrection power. He told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Ooh, hallelujah. Martha was like, yeah, I know he's going to rise again on the on the last day in the resurrection, Jesus. Jesus says, I am the resurrection, Martha. Oh, man, Jesus was grieving there, boy, at Lazarus' tomb. Oh, man, he was so grieved at death. He hated death. He hated death so much that he gave his life. He died to destroy death. Hallelujah. And he rose from the dead. Woo! Hallelujah. And this whole world system, I'm going to go ahead and go over here and read this to you, what they're trying to do. Let, let's look what they're going to do. What they're trying to do. And I'm telling you right now, they are losers. They have lost. They are done. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, praise God. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Verse 11, chapter 19 of Revelation. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. I love reading this. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. In righteousness. It's not about money. <laughs> the kings of this earth, the, the, the money changers and all these people, these corporate uh, bastards out there, all they're doing is is playing with tanks and missiles and guns and all this stuff, trying to make more money and control everybody. But Jesus, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. In righteousness. He's the winner already. He's fighting in righteousness. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah. That's a capital W. The Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. The armies which were in heaven <coughs> followed him. Upon white horses, clothed in fine linen and white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, Woo! that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Oh, hallelujah. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, <laughs> and against his army. Oh yeah! They're, they're making war right now against the Lord Jesus and against those who belong to him. Hallelujah. Seated on white horses. I'm telling you right now, we have nothing to fear from this world order, saints. Nothing at all. We are the victors. Oh, praise God. Look at that. I'm going to read that again. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. All these beast systems of men, I'm telling you right now. Woo. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. I'm telling you right now, we are from above. See, we are from above. We are not of this world. We got to remember this. Oh, and I know the Lord's going to expound upon this more and more as we go forth into this new year coming up. 2020 God's going to perfect all of our vision I'm telling you he's going to be those visions he's given you are going to be be, be seen hallelujah They're going to be manifest because God said so God is the winner almighty Jehovah not the devil not this world system not this world order how they do things that's not the victor almighty God but if you or I, if we are not found in Christ, then we will be cast into that lake with 
which burneth with fire and brimstone. But I am so thankful to God that I am found in Christ today. Sharon is found in Christ today. You who are born anew and filled with the Spirit of God, found in Christ today. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. By the mercy of God. Not by anything which we have done, but all that He has done. Father, we bless you for this word. Thank you for saving us. Thank you that you are the victor. Thank you, Lord, that we are not of this world. Let us remember the humility of your dear son, Jesus Christ, your dear son, David, Lord, who, though he was able, he did not stretch forth his hand to kill his enemy. Oh, God, remind us that hatred is murder, Lord. And let us not have any murder in our hearts, oh, God. Holy Spirit, you search us today, try us, and show us if there's any wicked way in us. Lead us in the way everlasting. Lord, we are your army. The sword is going out of your mouth. Lord, let it go out of our mouth as well. Your word, your truth, for that is enough. Hallelujah. That will silence right there all the critics, all the enemy. All praise God. And your word will come to fruition. You will have your way. You have it right now. Thank you, Lord, that we are born from above. We are not of this earth anymore, of this world system. And crush the dragon under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. 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 Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the King, uh, the Word for Today broadcast is 6 a.m. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, we do the King's Road broadcast together, Sharon and I. Hallelujah. It's really good. And... Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Central is the morning devotional. Sharon brings that forth. And how well the Lord does it through. How I'm telling you right now. And it's it's powerful. It's powerful. And you listen to that. Because it's, and you listen to all these messages. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of word the Lord has had us bring forth since we've been on the Internet 2007. And uh, we just bless God for it. He's doing all the work. He's doing everything. Hallelujah. God provides everything we need when we need it hallelujah and we thank god for using those he uses to supply that in the natural realm now i'm talking and also in the spirit because god will minister to us through the saints oh it's so beautiful we just love to be ministered to by the brothers and sisters in christ because we we want that and we need that all of us do side by side together in the body hallelujah we all need ministry from the holy spirit through each other hallelujah oh praise god see we're brothers and sisters in christ <laughs> Praise God. Different mothers, but the same father. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. And we know what we're talking about. I'm telling you. And those who have been with us a while, you know what we're talking about. Praise God. You know, who've known us for a while. Hallelujah. And if you <coughs> are just listening this first time and you're born again and filled with the Spirit of God, hallelujah. You're our brother. You're our sister in the Lord. We are one body of Christ. Amen. Praise his holy name. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance on you, grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you in his name. That's his authority and his character and his dominion, his rule and reign. Be in and upon your life today as you go forth conquering and to conquer in the mighty humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah.